The Mouse and the Motorcycle, Chapter 3, Trapped. Even though Ralph woke up feeling sick and dizzy, his first thought was of the motorcycle. He hoped it was not broken. He sat there at the top of the wastebasket until the whirly feeling in his head stopped, and he was able, slowly and carefully, to stand up. He stretched each achy muscle and felt each of his four legs to make certain it was not broken. When Ralph was sure that he was battered but intact, he examined the motorcycle. It set, he set it upright and rolled it backward and forward to make sure the wheels still worked. One handlebar was bent and some of the paint was chipped off the rear fender, but everything else seemed all right. Ralph hoped so, but there was no way he could find out until he figured out how to start the engine. Now he ached too much even to try. Wearily, Ralph dragged himself over to the wall of his metal prison and sat down beside the apple core to rest his aching body. He leaned back against the side of the waste paper basket, closed his eyes and thought of his Uncle Victor. Poor nearsighted Uncle Victor. He too had landed in a metal waste paper basket, jumping there quite by mistake, unable to climb the sides. He had been trapped until the maid came and emptied him out of the trash. No one knew for sure what had happened to Uncle Victor, but it was known that the trash in the hotel was emptied into an incinerator. Ralph felt sad and remorseful, thinking about his Uncle Victor, getting dumped out with the trash. His mother had been right after all, his poor mother, gathering crumbs for his little brothers and sisters, while he, selfish mouse that he was, sat trapped in a metal prison, for which the only escape was to be thrown away like an old gum wrapper. Ralph thought sadly of his comfortable home in the mouse hole. It was a good home, untidy, but comfortable. The children who stayed in room 215 usually left a good supply of crumbs behind, and there was always water from the shirts hung to drip dry beside the wash basin. It would, it should have been enough. He should have been content to stay at home without venturing out into the world looking for speed and excitement. Outside in the hall, Ralph heard footsteps and Matt, the bellboy, saying, these new people into 15 and 16, somehow they got the idea there were mice in the hotel. I just opened the window and found them, the management, and told them the management wouldn't stand for it. Ralph heard a delighted laugh from a second floor maid, a college girl who was working for the summer season. Mice are adorable but just the same. I hope I never find any in my rooms. I'm afraid of them. There were two kinds of employees at the Mountain View Inn. The regulars, none of them young, and the summer help who are college students working during the tourist season. If you don't like mice, you better stay away from the knot hole under the window in 215, advised Matt. The sound of voices so close made Ralph more eager than ever to escape. No, he shouted his voice echoing in the metal chamber. I won't have it. I'm too young to be dumped out with the trash. In spite of his aches, he jumped to his feet, ran across the waste basket floor and leaped against the wall, only to fall back in a, in a sorry heap. He rose, back off. He rose, backed off and tried again. There he was on the floor of the waste basket a second time. It was useless, utterly useless. He did not have the strength to tip over the wastebasket. Ralph was not a mouse to give up easily. He considered his problem a moment before he rolled the motorcycle over to the wall of the, of the wastebasket. Then he seized the apple core by the stem and dragged it over to the motorcycle. By putting his shoulder under the stem end, he managed to rise the core until it was standing on its blossom end. And when he put his front paws around it and tried to lift it, he found out he could not. The core was too heavy to lift up onto the seat of the motorcycle. Ralph was disappointed, but when he stopped to think it over, he saw that even if he could manage to get the apple core on top of the motorcycle, it still would not be high enough to allow him to climb out of the wastebasket. Bruised and defeated, Ralph dropped the core and decided that he might as well be thrown out with the trash on a full stomach as an empty one. He took a bite of apple and felt a little better. It was the best food he had eaten in several days, juicy and full of flavor, much better than the damp Zwieback crumbs that other guests, the other guests had left behind. 
He took several more bites and settled down to a heavy metal, to a hearty meal, saving the seeds for dessert. Two ant scouts appeared on the rim of the wastebasket. Go away, said Ralph crossly, because he did not like to eat food crawling with ants, and because it embarrassed him to be seen in such a predicament. The ants fell, left as silently as they had come. When Ralph had eaten his full of apple, he curled up beside the core. He only hoped that someone might happen to drop a Kleenex under him, over him. It was bad enough to be carried to one's doom in a wastebasket, but to be carried to one's doom by a shrieking maid was unthinkable. There was one tiny ray of hope. If someone did happen to drop a Kleenex over him, he just might have a chance to jump and run when the maid tipped the basket up to empty it into the incinerator. The thought that the boy was sure to miss his motorcycle and start looking for it kept Ralph tossing and turning, turning behind the apple core until he stuffed, until stuffed and exhausted, he finally fell asleep.